look at how this looks in, in kind of a running environment. Um, this is just more or less a conceptual mock-up of that. So if you think of your sort of main super loop uh, in the back, uh, continuously calling the task functions for libraries, here you can see how you would have a graphics library with its own graphics task function um, that may go off and draw whatever next uh, image or button or slider that, that uh, you're, you've uh, asked it to by calling an API function. Uh, your TCP IP task function may go off and process TCP IP packets, and your spy driver may be off processing audio, sending audio out to the SPI to a codec. This uh, runs indefinitely and, and keeps these state machines running. What it does is each library's task function just checks its status, its state variables, or its uh, interrupt flags and says, do I have anything to do? If it does have work to do, it will execute you know, whatever the next piece of that, the next slice of that work is before it would have to wait for the next interrupt or the next bit of data to come in. Um, this runs continuously in, in the loop, and it, it, uh, execution just goes from one state machine to another within this pole super loop. This is what we mean by a polled configuration within NPI Harmony. Now, if you've done this sort of thing before, you can look at this and say that you and realize very quickly that if the say the graphics library spends two or three hundred milliseconds drawing a graphics image, and the TCP/IP stack spends a couple hundred milliseconds processing uh, you know kilobytes worth of packets, uh, likely your spy driver that was streaming audio uh, millisecond at a time has probably run out of data, and and you'll have gaps in your audio. When you hit that sort of situation, um, we recommend you move to an interrupt-driven configuration, or at least for uh, the peripheral drivers, uh, particularly in this example, the spy driver. What this does is it allows you to configure that driver, first of all, to tell it it's going to be run interrupt-driven so that it knows it needs to enable or disable its interrupt. And then secondly, instead of calling that state machine function, that spy task function from within the polled loop, that can be called within the ISR. Now, it operates the same exact way. We design uh, the Harmony drivers so that they, uh, their state machine functions can be used this way. They can either run polled and they check their flag to make sure that there's a flag set or they don't do anything, or they can be run interrupt driven. They still check their flag, um, but that just provides a, a more robust, uh, you know, if, if a spurious interrupt should occur, the driver won't do anything untoward um, because it always checks its flag anyways. So this is how a single library in the Harmony environment can be configured to run either interrupt-driven or polled. Now, even if you move all of your um, your library, you know, you can put together a capable system before you start having timing issues again. But uh, if you, you know, once your system grows large enough, as you uh, as you integrate more effectively purely software capabilities into your application. Um, you can still run into the problem where you have the graphics library off drawing, you know, beautiful graphics while your TCP IP stack needs to process a packet or it's going to drop that packet. Um, when you start, you know, in, in, in encountering uh, latency challenges like that in the pure software environment, what you can do within Harmony then is move to an operating system environment, move to the use of an RTOS and split out that single top-level super loop into multiple individual loops, each one running in its own RTOS thread. Or you can group, you know, different libraries into different RTOS threads. It's entirely up to you. You design, you define the configuration. Uh, the MHC just provides a few sort of pre-made configurations for you. Now, in an RTOS environment, you can see now each of these libraries, if it's running in its own loop, uh, in its own thread, can be prioritized using the capabilities of the RTOS itself. So now, using MPLAB Harmony uh, in an RTOS configuration, you have the ability for uh, complete determination of the priorities from the lowest level interrupts up to the highest level abstract threads. And you can prioritize and control the, uh, uh, the interaction of your entire system this way. 